It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tibbetts Physics. What is crappening? Today, we are going to start modern physics. And specifically, we're going to look at the photoelectric effect. Unfortunately, the simulation that I would use to show you this no longer works because it requires flash. So I've attached a couple of videos that go into more details about what I'm going to show you. Uh, but hopefully with my drawings, you could get the gist. So the photoelectric effect says that, let's say we have a negatively charged metal plate. And we're going to shine light on it. So the first thing we're going to do is shine a light bulb on the metal plate and watch what happens. And lo and behold, nothing happens when we shine just a normal light bulb on a metal plate. But what we could do next is look at different colors of light. So if we shine a red light on the metal plate, we will then get an electron that's ejected off of that metal plate. If we crank up the brightness of this red light, we're then going to get more electrons that are ejected. If we go down the electromagnetic spectrum to a higher frequency, let's say violet, and we shine violet light on this metal plate, we're also going to get electrons that are ejected from the metal plate. And if we crank up the brightness or intensity of the ultraviolet, we're going to get even more electrons that are ejected off the metal plate. Now the difference between the red um, light and the ultraviolet light is their frequencies. But if we look at the energies of the electrons ejected, we'll notice that all of the electrons from the ultraviolet light have the same amount of energy. And all of the electrons released from the red light also have the same amount of energy. But the ones from the ultraviolet have a higher or increased amount of energies compared to the red light. So what that tells us is that these electrons and also these photons must have specific amounts of energy in order to get these specific amount of electrons ejected. So just to summarize, when we shine lights of specific frequencies on a charged metal plate, we can get electrons released that have specific energies that correlate with the photons from the light. The higher the frequency of the light that hits the metal plate, the more energized the electrons are. And then if we turn up the brightness of the light hitting the metal plate, we're just going to get more electrons, but the energies will still stay the same. So if we want to calculate this, we could calculate the energy of a photon and that's equal to H times F. H is Planck's constant. And it can be found on the front page of your reference table because it's a constant. And it's 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds or joules times hertz. Now this idea that the electrons, or sorry, 
This idea that the photons come in specific amounts of energy, thus releasing specific electrons when they hit the metal plate, is called quantum physics. And it was Einstein who came up with this idea, oops, quantized. It was Einstein who came up with this idea that these photons must exist in tiny packets of energy, in their specific amounts of energy. So light exists in specific bundles of energies. And those are called photons. Hopefully I can spell it right this time. And notice, if we look at the formula energy of photon equals hf, the energy is based off of the frequency of light. So the higher the frequency, the higher the energy of the photon. In 1922, Einstein won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the law of the photoelectric effect. And he was finally able to pay his wife his divorce money from three years ago that he promised her that he'd win a Nobel Prize. Anyways, we can also calculate the energy of the photon using a different formula, knowing the frequency of light. And we know from before that the speed of a wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So if we isolate the frequency, we get F is equal to V over lambda. And since we're dealing with the speed of light, we say F is equal to C over lambda, which means the energy of a photon can also equal HC over lambda. Also in your reference table in your modern physics section. Let's look at the units of the energy of a photon. We've, we've learned before that the units of any energy are joules or capital J. But we're going to use a new unit and it's called an electron volt. So one electron volt or we could say EV is equal to 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. This number looks familiar. That's the charge. That's one elementary charge of the charge of an electron or a proton. So an electron volt comes from parallel plates. And if we remember parallel plates, one side is positive, one side is negative, and we can take a charge and put it in between those two plates. And we, if we recall that V, the electric potential, is equal to W over Q, let's isolate W, so W is V times Q. Q is the charge of an electron or proton, and we're gonna say an electron volt is the amount of energy required of one volt times 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So it's the energy that one volt does to move one elementary charge, which gives us one EV is 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. This is on the front page of your reference table in the unit section. Let's do a problem together. We're gonna to look at number five from your quantum homework sheet. Number five reads, the frequency of an incident photon is 5.0 times 10 to the 14th hertz. What is the energy in joules? So we're given F equals 5.0 times 10 to the 14th hertz. And all we wanna do is find its energy. So let's use our formula E photon is equal to H times F. We're given F and H is Planck's constant. So we can look that up in a reference table. 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per Hertz, or we could say joules times second, same thing. Times the frequency 5.0 
times 10 to the 14th hertz. Plug and chug, and we get the energy of the photon to be 3.31 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Okay, letter A, second part. What is the color of light? To find the color, we have to look up the, or the color is based on the frequency. So we'll look at our reference table. We're given a frequency of 5.0 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And that's between 4.82 and 5.03. So the color is orange. Just a quick side note. An electron volts, 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And Planck's constant, H, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. And then lastly, the formulas are in the modern physics section, which is on the second to last page. Okay, so, sorry. The color of light is orange. And then letter B, what is the energy in electron volts? So now we want to go from joules to electron volts. So let's write down our answer in joules. 3.31 times 10 to the negative 19th, oops, negative 19 joules. And we want our answer in electron volts. So we know one electron volt is equal to 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Our joules will cancel out, so we're left with electron volts. And we get for our answer 2.07 electron volts. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. See ya.